because the spirit of fear is going to make you wonder. Next time you hear, go there. Here, you, they go, you say, here, you have to drink this. So you, are, you start with simple things like drinking water, then you drink oil, then you drink kerosene. <laughs> <laughs> Now you are chewing grass. <laughs> what is happening? The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. You're wondering. Your mind is gone. You're not composed. Then you go and meet some guy. They take you to somebody. Say, this one, God is using me. Hey, I'm telling this guy, if God is using him. Oh, you, go, you go to his one room apartment. You look inside around his room. Wow. God is really using him. <laughs> but he can solve your problems for you. And somehow he tells you things you believe. He tells you your wife is the one doing it. Your auntie is the one doing it. Your best friend is the one doing it. And then you believe it. What is happening? The tiger has roared. Life is roaring at you. And you are wondering... Your mind is not stable. May God give you self-control. <laughs> Possess your soul. Possess your soul. Don't be agitated. Stay. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. If you trust God, trust him. If you believe him, believe him. If you believe he's faithful, stand still and see his salvation. Don't run from place to place. Don't hop from place to place. Stand still and see his salvation. But fear is going to make you do crazy things. Go to places you shouldn't go to. Believe things you shouldn't believe. I mean, look at some of the things that sometimes, you know, happens these days in the name of church. And these are sensible people who are being made to do things that you wonder, are they out of their senses? No, 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 no. When fear roars at you, I'm telling you, you go to a place, they take you, take out your underwear, you take it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Believe you, fear, fear is very powerful. You take it off. And then when your friends ask you, why were you doing that? Are you crazy? I say, Mikra, I don't know what came over me. It's called fear. It's called fear. Fear came upon you. Fear is going to make you lose control. You're going to hop from place to place. You, you, people are going to abuse you. People are going to destroy you. People will take advantage of you. And after all is said and done, you are worse off. May you have the spirit of sound mind. Somebody say, I have sound mind. Say, my mind is sound. I have clarity. And I'm in charge of my thinking. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, of sound mind. Final thing about the spirit of a sound mind is that the spirit of sound mind helps you to have comprehension. Comprehension. What is comprehension? The ability to understand what is going on. The spirit of a sound mind stabilizes you to see the larger picture. To see the hand of God in a chaotic situation. To see that God is with you. To see that all things are working together for your good. That God is using your situation to work out his purposes. God is able to position you right. Ephesians 3.18 to 19 says that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is that width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that we may be filled with all the fullness of God to comprehend. Sometimes you go through what you're going through because of where you are going to. Jesus is going to Jerusalem but he had to go through Samaria. He had to. There are certain things you have to go through to get to where you are going to. It's, and so what you're going through is a process to your destination. 
All you need to do is keep your focus and walk through it because pretty soon at the end of that journey, another page will be open in your life and what you thought was just going to be the end of your life, you realize was the process of birthing your destiny. The spirit of a sound mind helps you to see the hand of God. That your life is in God's hands. That he's guiding you. That he's leading you. That he's directing you. Sound mind to comprehend. To make sense. So that finally you look at your life and you say, wow, it makes sense. This is what God is doing in my life. This is my season of being in the wilderness. The Bible says after Jesus was baptized, you think the next thing he would do is to go and work a miracle. But he's driven by the Holy Spirit, not by the devil, to the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days of power. <laughs> and then the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. And everybody heard about him. But for those 40 days, nobody heard about him. He was struggling in a life and death struggle with the devil for 40 days. But then after that, everybody heard about him. When you have a spirit of a sound mind, you can understand the wilderness process and the manifestation process. Many times when you go through a wilderness, it is in preparation for a greater manifestation. Sometimes God takes a little thing you trust, which you believe is everything, takes it out of your hand because he wants to put something bigger in your hand. But if he tells you to leave it, you wouldn't leave it. So he will hit your hand to drop it. Boom! So go away of your hand. Boom, drop it. Because I need your hands for something bigger. He needs your hands for something bigger. When the small thing drops from your hand, it's not the end of your story. Open your hand again because the same God who put the small thing there is about to put something bigger into your hand, something greater into your hand. You have to comprehend it. The spirit of a sound mind helps you to see God is in this. Jacob woke up from his sleep, sleeping on a stone pillow. I believe you me, sleeping on a stone pillow in the wilderness. It's not a pleasant thing. But he woke up and he said, God was in this place and I didn't know. Because on that stone pillow, he had a vision of the heavens open. I don't know what pillow you are on. It may be stone, it may be wood. It may even be nail pillow. It's piercing your head. But have a spirit of a sound mind and see that God has a greater purpose for you than the experience you are going through. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. The difference in all of this dealing with fear is not how courageous you are, how strong you are. It is who is in you. If you don't have him inside you, if he is not in your life, this will sound like a good message, but nothing good will come out of it in your life because what makes it real is Christ in you. Christ in you. He's the difference maker. He's the one who makes all things beautiful in the end. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you've never given your life to him, somebody will say, oh, Pastor, I just love the preaching. Just leave Jesus out. Well, Jesus is the center of the preaching. He, he, he makes everything real. If you are not born again, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, if you don't have an assurance in your heart that you will make heaven when you leave this earth, if you are not very sure of where your eternal destiny will be, if you are not sure whether your sins have been forgiven or not, then you need to be sure and make Jesus the Lord of your life. If you are here this morning and you say, Pastor, I really want Jesus in my life. I want Christ to live in me. I want the hope of glory in me. I want to overcome this fear that is 
troubling me. I want to live in the victory of Jesus Christ. If that is your prayer, wherever you are, I'm going to make a call to you right now. Listening to me or listening by online or some other means, if you're listening to me, you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand. You want Jesus to come into your life. You want to be born again. Lift up your right hand. You say, Pastor, I want to be born again. I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be sure that when I die, I will go to heaven. Let your right hand go up. Let your right hand go up. Let your right hand go up. For those of you in front, I'm going to ask you to put your hand on your heart as we pray. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. The whole church will join us in this prayer. Say with me, Heavenly Father. I come to you today just as I am. I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. Wash away my sins with the blood of Jesus. From today, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I boldly declare that Jesus died for me. He rose again from the dead. And from today, he is my Lord and my Savior. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all to Jesus. I declare today, I have the spirit of a sound mind, the spirit of love, and the spirit of power from Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for accepting me in Jesus' name. Amen. yourself an unparalleled experience of divine revelation and spiritual empowerment. Greater Works 2023. Speakers, Pastor Matthew Ashimolo, Bishop Tudor Bismarck, Bishop Mike Okonko, and your host, Pastor Mensa Otterbill. Date, Monday 31st July to Friday 4th August. Morning sessions from Tuesday 1st August to Friday 4th August. Time, 9 a.m. Evening sessions, Time, 5 p.m. each night. Venue, Christ Temple East, Teshi. Buses will be available at vantage points across the city to convey you to and back from the conference. Visit gwcentral.org for more details. Greater works. Ignite your faith. Transform your life. It's coming down. Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebill, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebill. Email otebill at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-000.